Hey, so every now and then I get asked what gear do I use to make my videos or what are some of my favorite filmmaking gear? Now, since I've gone freelance recently, I've been traveling more, so I'm gonna go over some of the gear that I use for YouTube and what I usually pack with me whenever I travel. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about are the cameras. Now, I actually have two mirrorless cameras that I use for client work or YouTube work, and the one that I primarily use for my videos is the Sony a7S III. This is like the jack of all trades camera over the last couple of years, and in my opinion, it's the perfect YouTube camera because it can shoot 4K 120 frames per second, which is perfect to capture those cinematic B-roll, and it can also shoot 10-bit 422, so I have the freedom to push my footage a bit more when I have to color grade. But probably as to why I chose the a7S III over the Canon R5 or C70 is the fact that I can shoot incredible low light videos without it looking like a complete mess with grain and noise in the shadows. Plus, Sony's S-Log3 color science on these newer cameras are really nice on skin tones, and I've already made a preset in Final Cut that I can just drag and drop whenever I film a new video. And this camera isn't the cheapest, but since I make videos for a living, it's worth it for me. Now, the second camera is sort of my go-to travel camera, but I mainly use it for photography, which is the Sony a7 IV. Now, this can also film in 10-bit 422 with S-Log3, which is my exact same setup as my a7S III. Uh, the only downside here is that it can't shoot uh, 4K 120, but it does have 4K 60, which is good enough for me. And like I said, this isn't my primary video camera, Camera, but having that 33 megapixel sensor for photos is really nice. And next up is the camera that I just got a few weeks ago and one that I've actually been digging quite a lot and this is the DJI Action 2 camera. They actually sent me this to check out for this video, so huge shout out to DJI for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now, I've never owned an action camera before, and this, in my opinion, is the perfect one to get in 2022. It's super lightweight, it's sleek, it's compact, made from high quality aluminum, so build quality is crazy good, unlike the plastic you build on other brands. Uh, this thing is super portable too, which only weighs 56 grams, which is insanely light. Now, just like my a7S III, it can shoot 4K at 120 frames per second, but it also features a really wide 155 degree field of view so you can get everything in frame and you can always just crop in post if you want. Now this also features crazy built-in stabilization. It features Horizon Steady, which uses DJI's algorithm to lock onto a leveled horizon in every frame, regardless of how the camera's mounted or worn. And then there's Rock Steady, which is an electronic image stabilization technology that just stabilizes your footage. And this basically increases your shutter speed, analyzes the footage on the sensor, and then compensates by cutting off the edges of those frames and stabilizing your footage. Now all of that sounds cool and all, but What's really unique about this Action 2 though is the fact that one, I can magnetically attach this thing to anything that's made out of metal or to a bunch of their accessories like this remote control extension arm, which is kind of like a, uh, it's like a selfie stick with a remote at the end. Uh, or my favorite, which is the lanyard chest trap. Now this can give you a bunch of different perspectives that can really elevate your videos. But aside from that, you can even add a second screen so you can see yourself if you want to vlog, which actually might be be the perfect camera for vloggers in 2022 because of the built-in four-way stereo mics that they have on here. All right, I just wanted to test the mic quality on the DJI Action 2 for you guys. I'm about, I don't know, two, three feet away from the camera. And yeah, basically this is what it sounds like. I think it's the perfect vlogging camera. Like I said, the mic quality is insane on such a tiny package. Uh, but, you know, let me know what you guys think. You be the judge. Okay. All right, so I feel like I could fit inside of it. Oh my god. I feel like I'm gonna get an MRI or something. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't recommend fitting a passenger back here, but it's big enough to fit me. Like, that, that's kind of terrifying. Plus, the image stabilization is insane, like I mentioned, so if you're traveling in the next few months, I would definitely check this out because of how compact and lightweight it is. Now, I don't wanna take up too much time in this video raving about how cool this camera is, but if you want me to review this thing as a whole and go more in depth, just sound off in the comments because there really is so much more to talk about this camera and show off what kind of cool shots you can get with this. But having this in my collection of gear as a BTS cam or a specialized camera is really nice. 
If I'm ever traveling and want to vlog, I can do that with this. If I want to attach the action two to a car or get someone's POV, for example, I can easily get those shots using the action two and the other mounting accessories that they offer. DJI is actually having a sale on the Action 2, so if you want to learn more about that sale going on, check out the first link in the description below to learn more. All right, now let's talk about lenses. Now, the one that I've been using way more since I picked it up last month is the 50 millimeter F1.2 GM from Sony. This lens is almost always paired with the a7 IV just because I use it for photos and I love the 50 millimeter look. Pairing that focal length with that F1.2 aperture, which by the way is super sharp wide open, you'll get the dreamiest looking bokeh in a modern lens. Now the only downside to this lens is that it's quite heavy, so shooting all day, your arms are probably going to look swole after using this combo. And the last one I want to highlight is my trusty 35mm f1.8. This is what I mainly use for my talking head, which is what you're seeing now. I was going to pick up the f1.4 GM from Sony, but ended up going with this instead since the GM suffers from horrible focus breathing, and I also heard that it's not as sharp wide open. So the f1.8 is the perfect 35 millimeter lens, at least for me. It's a lot smaller compared to the 1.4 GM and doesn't weigh a ton like the 50 millimeter that I have, uh, but it's really sharp wide open as you can see, which is always a plus. Now, when it comes to accessories, I actually have two products that I wanna put you guys on. Filters are a must if you're serious about filmmaking, so I'm gonna put you guys on the Moment Cinebloom and the Kalari ND Mist Filter Combo. So for the Cinebloom, you can get these in three different variations. You can get it in five, 10, or 20% strength. And what this filter does to your footage is basically make them less digital and softens the overall image to give your footage that quote unquote cinematic look. And this basically means that it's lowering your contrast and gives your highlights this uh, blooming effect whenever light hits your camera. I have the 5% on almost all my lenses and I've tried all three and I think the 5% strength is the perfect intensity for everyday shooting. Uh, but this one in my hand is the 10% one. Now the second accessory I want to put you guys on is this Kalari ND Mist Combo. I'm sure you guys are familiar with variable ND filters, they're super handy especially shooting outdoors. Now I shoot a ton of tech products and if I'm shooting outside and using a variable ND, it can affect the phone or laptop screen to a point where it'll get too dark if I'm shooting at an angle. Now this is a much smaller camera filter and it goes in front of your camera sensor versus mounting it in front of your lens and with this you have uh, the ND filter and a quarter mist all in one. That mist is basically a Cinebloom filter that I just talked about earlier. So if you're always shooting outside and you're constantly switching lenses and you want to keep your aperture as low as possible and your camera doesn't have built in NDs, this is actually the closest thing you can get to having built in NDs on a mirrorless camera like the a7S III or a7 IV. Now, of course, you can get them with different ND strengths and different mist options. And I also noticed that these don't affect colors, unlike some of the NDs that I've used before. So I'm actually really happy about that. So if I'm shooting outside all day, I usually just have this mounted to my camera all day and I can just switch lenses freely without having to worry about finding the right filter size or the right ND filter. All right, now let's talk about audio. Audio makes a big difference in your videos, so if you wanna create high quality content and want your videos to stand out, make sure that you're not forgetting about your audio. I'm a huge fan of XLR microphones and the one that I actually just started using recently is this Baby Bottle SL from Blue Microphones. I was using the Shure MV7 as my primary mic for my YouTube videos in the last several months, but I decided it was time to upgrade and be a bit different from other content creators. The MV7 is still around the studio, but I love how the Baby Bottle SL looks on video and I personally think that my voice sounds way better on this thanks to the warmer tones and the fullness of it. I don't really know how to explain it in video, but it just sounds more rich and it sounds more natural to me. Now since this is an XLR microphone, I actually have this plugged into my my Elgato Wave XLR to my MacBook Pro, which makes recording voiceovers or audio like this so much easier. 
And lastly, I wanna talk about lighting. Now I've made some upgrades over the last year and a half versus when I first started making YouTube videos. And before I actually relied heavily on natural lighting and that's not really all that efficient if I don't have enough light or maybe it's too bright. So my friends at Aperture actually sent me their Amaran 100X to check out and I pair that with their Lantern Softbox which gives a 360 degree soft diffuse lighting. And after using that combo for a couple of months, I actually went ahead and bought an Amaran 100X for myself and added a bigger soft box from Small Rig, which I'm actually using right now as my key light. Now, what I love about these lights is the fact that these are bicolor, so you can go from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin, which helps me match the environment I'm in. But the best part about these lights is that I can use the Citus Link app so I can control the lights individually or as a group with my phone and change all of those settings on my phone. Now these lights also have some built-in effects like strobe, fire, paparazzi, or TV effects to help you get the shot that you need. And I don't know, it's just really nice to have this kind of lighting for any video work that I do. And if you're just starting, all you really need is one and then work your way from there. Plus these are pretty affordable too, which is perfect for creators that are just starting out. Oh, and before I forget, I also wanted to quickly highlight this Nanlite tube light that I picked up recently, and this is more of my go-to wand light if I need a bit of extra lighting if I'm on the go. This has a rechargeable battery, it charges via USB-C, it's bi-color with RGB support, and this thing is dope. I use this a ton if I'm traveling for a shoot or if I need to fill a light at a really tight space, so this comes in handy for that. Plus, it's magnetic on these two sides, which is perfect for mounting on metal surfaces Surfaces. But yeah, that's the gear that I use to make videos like this. And if you're interested in picking up any of the gear that I just talked about in this video, all the links will be in the description below. Again, huge shout out to DJI for sponsoring a portion of this video. Make sure to pick up the Action 2 using my link below. The price is a steal in my opinion. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.